Well, good morning, uh, good afternoon at this point. The human brain has always been a subject of great fascination. Since the 1920s, when we first started studying human EEG, which is essentially the process of observing brain waves or changes in electrical fluctuations that can be measured at the surface of the scalp, which result from neurons firing, we have dreamed and imagined of a time when it might be possible for us to control and influence our environment simply with our minds. This was an area that captivated the imagination of our team at Emotive. You know, we were inspired by the idea and the possibility of introducing total communication to the way in which we interact with computing platforms, applications and devices. Because up until now, our communication with machines is very limited to conscious and explicit commands. Whether it's something that we do every day, like you know, turning on the lights with a switch, or something more complex, like programming software, we have always had to give a command, or even a series of commands to a machine, in order for it to do something for us. Communication between people, on the other hand, is actually far more complex and a lot more interesting because we take into account so much more than what is explicitly expressed. We observe facial expressions and body language, and we can intuit from that feelings and emotions from our dialogue with one another. And this actually forms a very large part of our decision-making process. So our vision was to introduce this whole new realm of you know, total communication and human interaction into human-computer interaction, so that computers can actually understand not only what you direct it to do, but it can also observe and respond to your facial expressions and emotional experiences. And what better way to do this than by interpreting the signals naturally produced by our brain, our center for control and experience? Well, this sounds like a fairly straightforward and simple idea, but the task, in fact, wasn't easy for two main reasons. The first reason is in the detection algorithms. Our brain is made up of an estimated 100 billion active neurons. When these neurons interact, the chemical reaction emits an electrical impulse which can be measured. Now, the majority of our functional brain is distributed over this outer surface layer of the brain. And to increase the area that's available for our mental capacity, the brain surface is actually highly folded. And this cortical folding is what presents a significant barrier for interpreting the surface electrical signals. Because every single person's cortex is folded differently, very much like a fingerprint. And so even though a signal may come from the same functional part of the brain, by the time the structure's been folded, its physical location is very different between individuals, even identical twins. There's no longer any consistency in the surface signals. And so our breakthrough was to create an algorithm that unfolds the cortex so that we can map the signals far closer to its source and therefore making it capable of working across a mass population of users. The second challenge that we face is in the device for collecting brain waves. Now, EEG measurements typically involve an, a hairnet with an array of sensors like the one that you can see in this image here. A technician will place the electrodes onto the scalp using a conductive gel or paste, and only after a process of preparing the scalp by light abrasion. So if you can imagine, this is not the most comfortable process. And on top of that, it's quite time consuming. Um, and, and really, further to add to that point, these systems cost in the tens of thousands of dollars. So with that, I'd like to um, invite on stage, in fact, back on stage, um, Stramai, who has so kindly agreed to help me to demonstrate what we've been able to develop. <laughs> Yay! Uh, Stramai is awesome because he was so entertaining before. So, okay, so what you see here is a 14-channel EEG acquisition system. It doesn't require any scalp preparation, um, no conductive gel or paste, um, and the, signal, it, the system is wireless, so it gives Strame the freedom to move around. And uh, compared to the tens of thousands of dollars for a traditional EEG system, this system is only uh, several hundred dollars. 
So, so we have a very limited amount of time available. So what we're going to do is um, really just focus on one, showing you one detection suite, which is the cognitive detection suite. Now, Stromae, as you can imagine, is a new user to the system. So we have to add a new user profile for him. OK, so the cognitive suite um, works in this way. There's a very quick training process involved. We can do brain research, but we can't get this <laughs> screen to work. All right, I think we'll just use the mag here, which works quite well. And then, lovely. So, OK, so the way that this works is we start with a neutral signal. So if you can, can you see this? So Stromai, what you want to do is just hang out and relax for a few seconds. Yeah. There's nothing in particular that you need to do. It's just trying to get a glimpse of how your brain works and what it's doing in there at the moment. So now that that <laughs> neutral training's done, um, why don't you choose an action? And there's a, there's a quick learning process involved. And you might want to get into the screen here so that you can see. Do you want to choose an action? Yeah. So push. OK. No, pull. Pull? All right. So now that what we want to do is you want to imagine the cube coming into the, uh, into the foreground, and you'll see a progress bar scroll across. Imagine pulling the whole time, OK? So one, two, three, go. Oh, you might want to mm. wireless. Thank you for wireless problems. All right, here we are. <laughs> OK, so let's try pulling again. One, two, three, go. OK, so the first time, as you can see, it has no idea how he thinks about pools and nothing happens. But now that it's got some sort of idea, you can try to imagine pooling. And the first time, you know, it's only got a few seconds, but oh, <laughs> oh that is really impressive. <laughs> oh, good job. <laughs> now he's just being, <laughs> now he's just showing off. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's a good job. So as you can see, it only takes a few seconds for someone who's a complete <laughs> new user to the system to, for it to learn and to get a sense of how you think about an action. And obviously, Stromai is very creative and has a big brain, so it works pretty well. <laughs> All right, so um, thank you so much for that. That's awesome. I won't hold you up for your flight. That's why. So with the, you can imagine there are many possible application areas for this new interface. Um, the idea is once you've trained up your thoughts and the machine understands how you think about certain actions, you can map these commands to any computing platform, application, or device. So today, we're working with thousands of developers and researchers around the world, you know, across 70, more than 70 countries worldwide, to try and find new and innovative ways to apply this technology uh, to new application areas, everything from uh, games and virtual worlds, it's not showing, uh, to, uh, thank you, uh, to toys and robotics, um, all, you know, even to market research and advertising, where you can really gain a true insight into how people are responding to material that's actually presented to them. You know, it can also be applied to real-world um, applications, such as being able to control a smart home or office. In this example, you actually see um, the guy being able to control the actual control system itself, uh, everything to actually controlling the curtains within the, uh, the office environment, to closing them and opening them. And then, you know, controlling the lights as well, turning them on as well as um, off, obviously. And we also see the opportunity to apply this to life-changing applications. Uh, in this example, the headset detections are mapped to controlling an electric wheelchair. Here, um, facial expressions are actually used for the movement-based commands. Now blink right to go right. Now blink left, turn back left. Now 
don't smile, they go straight. <laughs> That's his idea. You know, when I first started working on this idea, I thought that this technology had the possibility to change the world. But now that I'm able to share the technology on a much larger scale, I'm actually finding that it's changing people's lives in, really, in ways that I never imagined possible. So um, thank you very much for listening. <laughs>